Hello, Cosmic Comrades. We have got a packed week this week, so we are not going to waste any time. We are going to jump right on to it. Welcome to the podcast for the week of February 26th through... Are you ready? Drum roll. March 3rd. That's right, folks. We're starting the third month of 2024 at the end of this week. So this weekend, we are saying goodbye to February and hello to what all do we have? We've got the Astrological New Year in March. We've got the uh, St. Patrick's Day. We've got airy season, spring equinox. We've got lots of things coming up. We also have the beginning of eclipse season taking place in March. So turning points, turning points, turning points. If you have been sitting idle or if you've been impatiently waiting For an energetic shift, (laughs) you're going to get what you ask for, don't you, Larry? Hope you are feeling good. I hope you are amped up under this Virgo full moon. It's so funny because I was seeing some literature written about the Virgo full moon for Virgos and Virgo risings like me, and... (laughs) A lot of uh, a lot of the verbiage was about you know doing a makeover and getting a makeover, and it is funny because I have been um, contemplating leading up to this full moon on my ascendant on some of my natal aspects, and I've been um, going back and forth with my hair guy about going Ariana Grande blonde. Um, or like adding some some whisks of of blonde and uh, kind of like a golden brown into my hair. So it's funny. There is a personal makeover in the works for myself, but also drunkastro.com got a huge <laughs> facelift. <laughs> and I didn't even anticipate it. I literally, it just happened two days of rabbit holing. Um, and yeah, so if you want to check out drunkastro.com, Go check it out because she got a whole facelift and um, some of your quotes, some of the things that you have sent me in DMs and emails and phone calls and text messages um, have been added there so that other people can see like how powerful and transformative this work really is. Now, the other thing I want to just point out, because we have a lot going on this week, we're going to move a little bit faster because this podcast alone could probably be two hours if I wasn't contained. (laughs) Um, This is a week, a great week, um, to be a Daily Doser. Um, The Daily Dose of Stars subscription podcast, um, because there are so many aspects. I mean, let me just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine aspects that we're going to discuss this in this week's podcast right right now. Uh, but in the, I just don't have the ability to really like give you good. Um, I, I'm going to give you good comprehensive, um, but I, I've got to like pull back a little. Um, so anyway, the daily dose of the daily dose of stars podcast was, you know, free the last two weeks. So if you want to get a flavor, you you can go back and listen to those um, episodes. But this week we are back to closed, locked, key turned episodes um so you got to be a subscriber to get all the cosmic juice usurped out of the daily dose episodes but i did just want to put that in your ear because it is uh this is a week where you're gonna you're gonna want that (laughs) and so maybe you won't even have to wait for eclipse season to kick in for some disruptive change because that is definitely written in the stars this week let's just dive right on in and keep in mind too that at the end of this episode we are going to be working with the Sagittarius quarter moon and your how to manifest big in 2024 journal if you don't have that head down to the show notes scroll down click that link it's a free download 
lots and lots of people all over the world. Actually, we've got people in Africa. We got people in Russia. We've got people in Germany, Austria. Um, where else did I see? I saw a lot of people in London. So y'all are all around the world printing out your how to man your manifest big in twenty twenty four journals and really, really having a lot of a lot of things roll and move for you. I'm so happy to see it. And I and I was just talking to my partner a few days ago before recording and talking about like I'm really in my manifestations right now. I'm not like I'm not in the like, okay, I'm going towards it. No, I'm in it. And I attribute it to this Manifest Big in 2024 journal. I, I cannot emphasize enough how powerful it is as a tool to manifest. And your version of big is not going to be the same version as mine and someone else's, but whatever big means to you. So I don't want you to feel like um, discouraged, you know, because some people might say my dreams are small, you know, or, or vice versa. Like, oh, wow, you dream so big. Um, but we're actually going to talk about this notion of of dreaming big and your visions in this episode when we work with the Sagittarius quarter moon for our manifesting and for our dreams and our goals that we're setting for 2024. Okay, so keep in mind that that is on the other side of breaking down the aspects like we're going to do right in Nizzy now. So before we do, it's time for a little scat. Let's go day by day, shall we? This week in astrology, astro lovers. Monday is going to be one of your only days to freaking chill, okay? <laughs> Monday and uh, potentially Saturday, but Monday, um, yeah, Monday is kind of like the quietest day. So we're going to go right into Tuesday, February 27th. We've got Mars in Aquarius squaring off with Jupiter in Taurus. Now, Mars in Aquarius, very future focused. Where where am I physically going in the future? What does the future look like in my big picture? That's what Mars is looking for, right? So he's looking at plans, strategies, actions towards something in the future. Squaring off with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is our expander. So he makes everything bigger than it can seem. Um, so when we expand on Mars energy, action, energy, frustration, anger, um, and then we add Taurus, fixed Earth in there, relationships, money, desire, harmony, disruption in harmony, we see that there is a there's a, a possibility on Tuesday for there to be a lot of overdoing energy around what we're doing for the future, okay? So this is uh, something that you're going to feel. There, there's a, this is a bit of a, a stressful aspect. There is some like tug-of-war energy here, where I'm going and how am I getting there? How are we getting there? Aquarius and Taurus both have we energy, Taurus being Venus and talking about relationships, but Aquarius being the collective, you know, the, the collaborative um, component. So there's this like collaborative struggle between what's coming ahead and how we're getting there together. Okay, so that conversation there. Now, squares are calls to action. So where do you feel called to action and where is someone else feeling called to action? We jump to Wednesday, the 28th of February, <laughs> and today, this is a, now, this is just a big day, okay, because we've got the sun in Pisces, we've got Mercury in Pisces, so we're in Pisces season with the sun, now, the sun in Pisces wants us to power down, rest and relaxation, re rejuvenate, re-energize, this is like, how we plug up our phones and our Apple watches and all of our devices overnight 
to recharge so that we can use them at their full potential the next day. That's what Pisces season is, 30 days of rest and relaxation and plugging up, right? So actually, tonight, the night of the full moon, I am actually going to a sound bath. My partner and I are going to go. We are going to reset our bodies. We are going to alchemize from the inside out under the lunar this lunar cycle, which can be very, it's very yang energy. So that's what the sun in Pisces is looking for. The sun is looking for you to power down. Mercury in Pisces, on the other hand, is not such a happy camper. Um, Mercury in Pisces is full of emotion, but full of confusion on how to express his emotion. So the sun and Mercury come together and they meet in Pisces. So now on Wednesday, we have this handshake. Now, first and foremost, when the sun and Mercury come together, it's best. Okay, well, let me say something else. When the sun and Mercury come to meet up, a lot of times everybody feels like they're right. There is a lot of self-righteousness. And so we're talking about a water sign. So we're talking about emotional self-righteousness. So it's a day where some people are going to experience some kind of argument, some kind of tension. uh, Because the way they feel. (coughs) Excuse me. I suggest when the sun and mercury come together that you that you don't fight because both sides feel validated both sides feel like they're right they might not understand why just yet because pisces is the realm of things hidden it's water it's a little insecure at times um and it and it waves it it comes in it comes in tides so it can be great energy To handshake and say, after the Mars-Jupiter square on Tuesday, Wednesday comes, Sun and Mercury show up, and you go, this is, in order to get us to where we're going, this is what I'm willing to let go of. So that's a question to consider this week. What are you willing to let go of? It's actually going to get doubled down when we talk about the Sagittarius quarter moon. What are you willing to let go of in order to move into your next season? Now, Wednesday is big because we also have the Mercury-Saturn conjunction. (laughs) And right after that, we've got the Sun-Saturn conjunction because Sun and Mercury have just met up. So they're traveling hand in hand So (laughs) in Pisces. So Mercury comes to Saturn and goes, okay, so what am I supposed to do? What is the responsible thing to do? What boundaries do I need to create? Where do I draw the line? Now, remember, Saturn is a bit of a downer planet. So when the sun comes to meet up with Saturn on Wednesday, you know, the some element, whether it's you or a partner or collaborator, some relationship dynamic in some way, shape, or form, there is a... I hate that it's coming through like this, but it, it it's almost like an ultimatum. In order for me to move forward in this way or towards our next season, this has to happen or it's not happening. Uh, Saturn can deal a blow like that, and he's meeting up with Sun and Mercury. Um, so it just amplifies the the conversations that are being had. And also the feelings that are being experienced. So this is these are all handshakes. Mercury is our thinking mind, right? So we think like, okay, what, what are my lines in the sand? Where do I need finite? Where do I need definitive, measurable, tangible results? Where is that a necessity for me? And then the sun comes and says, okay, now share that. This needs to be said. So this is a a heavy day, and there's a message here um, of not disguising. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Oh, hey, hi, it's me interrupting the flow of this episode to share some really friggin' exciting news with you. Over the past several years, a lot of you have reached out like, Graham, are you ever going to teach astrology? Or Graham, if you had a course, I would be the first to sign up. Well, guess what, baby? Your dreams, your manifestations, and mine as well have come true, baby. That's right. As of very recently, my friends, astrologers for Elle Magazine, the Astro Twins, Ophi and Tali have tapped yours truly to become a certified coach in their brand new program called Become Your Own Astrologer. That's right. The queens themselves, the OGs, are going to be teaching you how to master the four-part puzzle when it comes to interpreting birth charts. That is, the planets, the zodiac signs, the houses, and the aspects. Learn and master those four things right there, and you are going to be an unstoppable cosmic force. So how's it going to go? Well, as the coach, you're going to be working with me in between the sessions throughout this program. So here's how it goes. The program starts March 9th, and it goes through May 4th. Eight Saturdays in a row, you're going to be learning from the queens themselves. In between Saturday sessions, you're going to be working with yours truly. And you're going to be putting in motion. You're going to be putting in practice that which you learn on Saturdays in these breakout sessions led by yours truly. But then we're going to take it a step further. And I'm going to teach you the drunk astrology way of working and optimizing with everything you learn. So scroll down in the show notes or go to astrostyle.com backslash drunk astro and you're going to get all the information you need. All the questions you might have are going to be answered. In that link right there, you're going to sign up and that will certify that you do these breakout sessions with me in between Saturdays. Okay? Here's what else is really cool. I'm going to be giving away free oracle readings for the first 10 people that sign up using my link. That's right. You're going to learn how to become your own astrologer. You're going to learn how to optimize that energy the drunk astrology way and then you're gonna get a free session one-on-one with me any other questions (laughs) scroll down to the show notes tap that link and i will see you there not disguising sacrifice as compromise chew on that i'm gonna go into that more Uh, on the Daily Dose um, episode. So, okay. We've got that. That's Wednesday. Then we move to Thursday, the 29th of February. (laughs) It's leap year, if you didn't know. So this year, we finally get that 29th day in February. And on the last day of February, we end with Mercury and Pisces, having just talked to the Sun and Saturn, coming into a nice sextile to Jupiter in Taurus. Now, this is an integration. So we we hand over. It's like Tuesday comes, we get knocked and rattled. Wednesday comes, we, we draw our lines in the sand. We, fi- we figure out what, what our what are uh, concrete what are the concrete things that we need in order to move forward and to be future forward and future focused what are the things that i need and there's there's lots to be discussed there's lots of conversation then from that we now domino effect into thursday mercury comes to jupiter and there is a there is an integration here where Jupiter is like, all right, well, I, I squared off with Mars for you. I, I'm under, I'm, I've, I've grown this. I've expanded this. I, I made it big for you to see exactly what are all the moving parts of this conversation of your future. Conversation of your future is what is being expanded 
here and what is what Jupiter is blowing up. Not blowing up in like the Uranus sense, but blowing up in the sense of it's expanding. It's making it bigger. Your future. It's making your future bigger. But you, it's it, it, through this conversation this week, you're seeing like, oh, okay, this has to get bigger. This has to get louder so that I can see all the different moving components, all the different moving parts. Mercury can come now and see like, okay, now that I see here, now that I know my own lines in the sand, now that I know partner's line in the sand, now I can integrate, now I can start coming up with ideas, now I can go talk to my community, now I can go get support, I can get spiritual guidance, I can get spiritual support, I can get um, friend support, family support, wh whatever makes sense in your story. But Thursday's a day where there's an integration based on the events of Tuesday and Wednesday. Then we move on to Friday the 1st of March. So, happy March. Is this, the, is this what they call the Ides of March? Is it the 1st of March? I, you know, my history, I, I it was never one of my, um, if it wasn't mythology, um, but was the Ides of March, March 1st? That was Julius Caesar, right? I used to be really good. Um, but, mm, well, no, wait, hold on. I wasn't ever great at history. I didn't have that many good history teachers, just like a Virgo, to criticize them and not, and not take it for myself. <laughs> But I really didn't. I really didn't have good history teachers until my last semester of college. And then I was like, oh, well, if my other teachers did it like this, I would have totally got it. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm Virgo. That's what we do. We criticize everyone else. It's the teacher's fault. It's not mine. <laughs> oh, my God, Graham. Terrible. I'm not always like this, okay? I promise. Um, all right. March 1st, whether it's the Ides of March or not, I'm sure someone will reach out to me and say, Graham, no, sir, that's not it. Or, yes, indeed, you were right. But anyway, Friday, it's March 1st. Now, Mercury has come up with some kind of integrative plan, or he's reached out, or he's been thinking. And then on Friday, March 1st, the Sun has an integrative sextile to Jupiter in Taurus. So now there's there's like a there's it's like literally this week it's just all like domino effect okay Tuesday leads to Wednesday Wednesday leads to Thursday where we're more in our thinking body we're communicating we're we're exchanging ideas and then Friday comes around and it's a toss off like bam now based on what you've come up with on Thursday, Friday shows up, Sun Jupiter sextile. Now there's now it's bigger. Now it's more seen, it's more evident, it's discussed in partnership and collaboration. Um and now I mean I'm sharing this like a story, but I mean keep this in mind as you move throughout your week that these are the conversations, these are your opportunities to work with these planets. There's also Big opportunity for some healing through all of this on Friday. Venus has a sextile to Chiron in Aries. So there, there's an opportunity here. And in and Friday's aspects kind of make it all worth it, right? First half of this week has a lot of dynamic stress and tension and friction and overdoing and over over the top feelings. But by the time we get to Friday, it, it kind of comes together or you have an opportunity for it to come together. Does that mean that everything works out in your favor? No, it does not. It, or it just suggests that in recognizing your boundaries, in recognizing what's working and what's not working in life right now, by having a deep understanding of those mechanics – that you get to heal through anything that seems like on the outside and it seems in your emotional experience it's not working. Friday comes around and says, hey, it's not working because this is leading you to something else. Your new season, your new season doesn't need this. 
Your new season is is waiting for you. You just don't know what that is. You're not aware of it, but the universe is like, yo, bitch, I got you, okay? I got you. Next week is a new moon, okay? We're Gucci, and the moons we're about to talk about because the Sagittarius quarter moon has a lot of messages for you, okay? Now, Saturday, like I said, potentially a day that could be like a come down, a rest period, um, but sometimes, sometimes these quiet days show up and they're like, yeah, we're not going to put a lot on your uh, physical plate because on the emotional level, we're, and you're going to be working through some things. So sometimes that's the story. Then we get to Sunday, the third of March. Now, Sunday as a whole Grab bag of energy. We are going to focus on the Sagittarius fourth quarter moon and Venus squaring off with Uranus. So Sunday is one of those days where hoodwinks, unexpected changes, shock and awe, surprises. What the hell? I mean, sometimes Venus and Uranus, when they square off, can be hot sex. So, you know, we're not always opposed to a hoodwink. Um, or a turnabout, or a, a an unexpected change of direction, you know, so, you know, can, we're not always upset, so you don't have to, like, clutch your pearls for Sunday, okay, um, because that Venus Uranus square, Uranus is just that rebellious energy, he's the shock agent, and he just loves to shake ish up, okay, there, there's not meant to be a status quo, so, like in the hot sex scenario, Venus squares off with Uranus because it's like, yo, we have we've been a little complacent. We've been a little too missionary. Change this ish up. What's that reverse cowgirl look like? <laughs> oh my god. Well, you can tell I didn't plan to say that. Whoopsie. Um, but you know, just have have fun, you know, if that if that is how this energy shows up for you, or if you want to plan it, you know, go ahead and plan it. Um, but now here we go. Let's talk about this Sagittarius fourth quarter moon. Oh, wait a minute, I got a scat. Okay. Now, if you don't have your Manifest Big in 2024 journal in front of you, I suggest you press pause and you get that ish. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't have it, you're going to scroll down to the show notes, click that link, and you're going to download it um, so that you can get to work on this thing. It is a work of art, science, plus the auspicious timing of the universe power packs your dreams and goals. And there is a difference. Okay. And I'm going to point this out to you when we talk about this. First, I want to just give you the cosmic breakdown of the Sagittarius quarter moon. Um, And because this energy is really what we're working through. We end the week with the quarter moon, but we're building the the moon itself, right? We had the full moon in Virgo Saturday morning. It's waning down, okay? So it's getting smaller. It is clinching um, down into oblivion into nothingness because that's what the new moon is it's the dark phase of the moon it's an empty vessel that's why we call in and we manifest in on a new moon and we are extrapolating and just pushing out and getting things out the door because you know we're literally creating space right um so we have to shed emotionally physically we have to purge emotionally physically we got to get it out, you know, or, you know, we're taking like, like what I'm about to do. I'm going to take stuff I've been meaning to get rid of out of my closet and just have been sitting next to my closet and just like, all right, time to go. It's time to get rid of all of this. So with the quarter moon, this is a crossroads moment. Okay. So this week you can very much experience a crossroads feeling. But which way will you turn? Old way? What you're familiar with? Or do you go a new way? New way is a lot of excitement, but a lot of people don't look at the unknown as exciting. They look at it very, you know, with their experience, colored by chironic experiences, wounded spaces, um, areas that need to heal. So 
when you think about new, do you automatically get stressed? Or do you have a tinge of like, I don't know what's on the other side of this for me, but I'm I'm willing to 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 see. So that's this crossroads moment that you're going to feel this week. It, and, and that question is, which way will I turn? Old and familiar or new and unfamiliar? Regardless of the decision you make this week, adjustments are required. Some key words to just keep in mind for a third quarter moon. We're looking at awkward because the energy's friggin' awkward. Suns in Pisces, emotional, swimmy, dreamy, floaty, uh, can be a little delulu, um, <laughs> delusional for those of you that might not speak Gen Z teak, uh, speak. <laughs> um, and then the moon's in Sagittarius, which is bold, brazen, fiery, active, expansive, visionary. Truth teller, truth seeking, you know, where the sun in Pisces goes, well, it can be so many different things. The Sag Moon says, hell no, nah, bish. It, it, no, what is it? I, I want to know. So it, it creates an awkward tension in, in the sky. So this can be stressful. Awkward, tense, and stressful are some key words for this lunar phase. You might be, and likely you will be, tired. By the time you come around to this weekend, okay? But it's not the time to rest on your laurels, okay? This is like pick yourself up by the bootstraps and keep going. Now, what does keep going look like under this energy? Well, this is like you know what you need to let go of. It's staring you in the face this week. But you might not want to. I will encourage you as your cosmic coach to make room for the new, okay? Making room emotionally, making room physically, making room mentally. You know what that looks like? Making room mentally, one can be a nice daily spiritual practice just to get some guidance and insight every single day. Hey, maybe it's a yearly reading. I mean, why not? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Is this thing on? Can everybody hear us? I sure hope so, because we have a lot to talk about. Welcome to our podcast, Unapologetically Mixed Up. I am Kelly, and this is... Mike. This is not a one-size-fits-all podcast. We will be discussing multiple different topics, from mental health, marriage... And don't forget the sports. Animals, and more. There are going to be real, raw, and emotional episodes where we show you our most vulnerable moments... Follow us and our guest on this crazy ride we call life. And don't forget to follow us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and our email address is unapologeticallymixedup at gmail.com. But it, it's also like a meditation practice. Clearing your mind or saying, allowing yourself to go, you know what? Part of my drawing the line in the sand this, this week is saying, I'm not going to think about this. I'm, I, and I'm not going to think about it because it's not serving me to obsess over this person, this relationship, this plan, this future of my. Well, no, I, I, no I'm sorry. I, I can't give you that one. <laughs> you got to be thinking about your future this week. No no ifs, ands, or buts, okay? This is not one of those weeks where you just say, nah, I'm going to just, I, I can't do it. Um, y- you can't do that. I'm so sorry. Uh, that is not how to work with this energy at all. But the new is right around the corner. And this is why I want you to make room for it in all these different areas of life. The Pisces new moon shows up next friggin' week. Okay, that is the turnaround, right? So we th- that's the container that we're looking for. But first, we have to shed. We have to release. We have to let go. And you know, and I can't wait till I listen to this myself because th- when, I, when I listen... I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to say it to future me who presses play on this podcast. You know what you need to let go of. You know what you need to eliminate. 
So just trust that you are making space for what is coming, even though you don't know what it is. Have faith that it is in alignment with what you want, with what you desire, and with what you deserve. And that you've earned for doing all the work you've done this far. You might need to change course now, some of you. If you've been a little complacent, you've been a little stuck, that's that crossroads. I'm really going to encourage those of you that have been feeling like, well, I make the same goals every year, or oh, it's just it just never happens. Like, no, no, that's I'm gonna have to turn the mirror. If that if you're in the same old story, time after time after time, this quarter moon is saying you are the common denominator. So you have to choose a new way a new approach, a new perspective, a new action, okay? So let go of any old stories. Let go of any just old ways of being, old ways of thinking. Release that ish. I almost said the S word. Um, Release it because you, you, you you gotta, you gotta. It's a crossroads, okay? So any conflict... That shows up for you this weekend. I mean, uh, it's written all over the week, but any conflict um, that comes up, I want you to examine it. And I want you to, to look for the message of your conflict. This is a relationship story, which for a lot of us is going to be a lot. It's a big, it's a, it's going to be a relationship. Is there room for compromise? But again, don't disguise compromise, sorry, don't disguise sacrificing your wants, needs, and desires as compromise. I want that to sink in. Don't disguise self-sacrifice, even self-destruction, as compromise. Only you will know within yourself especially with the sun and Mercury and Pisces, you know within yourself if you are self-sabotaging or if you are genuinely compromising. Okay. One last note. Just saw it. See, this is why I make notes. It's decision time. If you if you if you haven't if you haven't uh, formed that from everything that this episode has been, I know it's a little bit more intense because it's more intense energy this week. Um, but it is decision time. What's coming with you in your new season? I'm going to pose this as a question. What's coming with you? Who's coming with you in your new season? And what and who needs to be left behind? Now, leaving behind it doesn't have to mean if it's a person. It doesn't mean that, like, okay, you're gone. Bye. My astrologer said I have to let you go. Um, but sometimes that's just a need to change a dynamic. Y- you know, so it's like you don't rely on someone or you don't have the same expectations. Okay? So you'll know what is true and real, authentic, and genuine in your story. But just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. In terms of your manifestations and in terms of working with your Manifest Big in 2024 journal this week, (laughs) well, 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 this Sagittarius quarter moon is basically taking us back to the feeling of December 35th. 1st, January 1st, where that awe and wonder of what's coming ahead. What do I want to see in 2024? Because Sagittarius is talking and looking at your big picture. So I'm going to bring it back to dreams and and visions. And now I have been ad nauseum with this differentiation 
because I want it. I want to drive it home with you that dreams and visions are big, timeless, boundaryless, limitless components. It is your goals that are small, achievable, measurable, actionable steps towards the dreams and the visions. So because we've got this crossroad decision-making energy all this week, and we're ending with it on the third Sunday, I want you to reevaluate your big picture, meaning those big dreams and goals that you've written down, if you've already been working, I want you to go back. And I want you to take a look there, and I want you to evaluate, and I want you to sit with your big picture, your dreams, and your visions for 2024. It's been two months now. So maybe, you know, two months of experience in, maybe you feel more connected to some and less connected to others. In that case, the decision is, "Mm, I'm going to let this one go. Be honest with yourself, remember Sagittarius, truth-seeking. So you've got to be honest with yourself. And then when you do that, you're creating room for the new. You're creating space for the new. So any dreams and visions that you either say, I'm letting you go, or I'm moving you till later, I want you to fill it with either one of two things, a double down on dreams and visions that you are still actively pursuing, working with your journal, or I want you to fill it up with some new entity that has come up for you in these last two months of 2024. So... You're either doubling down or you're discarding or moving to later. That's your task, okay? That's going to get you working in sync with the lunar phases, in sync with the cosmos. Daily dosers, we are going to be talking about things way more. And you know that I'm going to be giving you a big monthly report For March, which with eclipses and all the things that are coming, yeah, yeah, get ready for that, Um, because we're starting March off rocking and rolling. So that's it for this week. Have a great week. I know we've talked about a lot of energy, and it's been sounding real intense, I know, but take the messages with you and apply as you move throughout your week. Okay, this might be an episode you want to keep coming back to and just kind of like, okay, now, wait a minute. What what was that again? What was that again? All right. So sending you big cosmic hugs. I will talk to you next week and in your inbox and on Instagrams. See you next week. Bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? from learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles to seeing it in real time in motion. Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.